in this video our topic will be uh, residues right and this uh, residue this term is related to the uh, singularity right and since singularities are related to lorentz expansion so i will start with lorentz expansion suppose suppose f z is a complex function has an isolated singularity at z equal to z not right has a lorentz expansion of the form fz equal to summation a k z minus z not to the power k where k starts from minus infinity to infinity this is called lorentz expansion which is valid for some punctured domain right and since uh, this series is centered at z not and we are saying that z not is the singularity of this complex valued function so its a domain of convergence should be like this capital r where r is the bigger radius right this is called the annular region inside which this lorentz series converge right so we will start with this lorentz expansion right and uh, i will just write this series in expanded form or fz equal to since it contains negative as well as positive powers of z minus z not so writing some of its terms like a minus 2 and we'll be having z minus z not square in the denominator and then a minus 1 z minus z not right and then the analytic part a not plus a1 z minus z not and so on right so this is fz lorentz series expansion of fz about the point z equal to z not so in this video we will be uh, taking a special interest towards this number right this is actually a minus 1 the coefficient of 1 over z minus z not this coefficient is called residue right the coefficient of 1 over z minus z not that is a minus 1 is called residue at the singularity z equal to z not right and why only this coefficient right as you can see there are so many coefficients a minus 2 a minus 3 and so on right but uh, why we are giving the special importance to this coefficient only right and this question will be answered in our next video where we'll uh, see the use of this residue in evaluating the contour integrals right so uh, you should remember one thing that uh, you just expand that function in lorentz series in positive or negative powers of z minus z not and pick up the coefficient of 1 over z minus z not that is denoted by a minus 1 right and that is called residue right so the basic principle to obtain a residue is to just expand the function in powers of z minus z not right uh, provided you choose a suitable do domain that is also important choosing a suitable domain is also important right and then the coefficient of 1 over z minus z not is called residue right this is the fundamental principle to find a residue right and since we know that this uh, lorentz series expansion right is uh, for when the singularity is of essential singularity or uh, removable singularity or pole there are three types of singularities as we uh, have discussed in, uh, in our last videos right classification of singularities uh, based on the uh, number of these terms in this principal part this is called the principal part right if there are no terms in the principal part then we have that uh, removable singularity if there are finite terms in this principal part then we have um, pole right and if there are infinite terms in this principal part we have essential singularity at that point right 
so all of those concept concepts will be uh, used in this video right you have to remember each and everything of that lorentz series right okay so i'm uh, talking about uh, poles what happens if a singularity is uh, if uh, residue is required at pole right we have a special formula for them right but uh, i think before uh, giving the formula for residue at poles i should uh, take an example uh, which supports this right lorentz expansion first i will take one or two examples in which i will rely on this uh, uh, lorentz expansion only right okay example number 1 uh find the residue of function fz equal to e to the power minus 1 over z square at z equal to 0 right and you can see that z equal to 0 is a singular point of this function right however uh, it is uh, giving e to the power minus 1 by 0 or it is appearing that e to the power minus infinity or it becomes zero it looks like that zero is at zero the function is equal to zero it is appearing like that but remember one thing this z is actually x plus i y right so not just overlook the value of a complex valued function uh, at some point do not just directly substitute z equal to zero here in that case you will get e to the power minus infinity and equal to zero right and it will appear like that it is a um, at this point the function is analytic but that is completely wrong you should express this function in terms of x and y means you have to convert this function in terms of x and y x plus i to y then you choose different path passing through z equal to 0 and you should get the same answer every time as we uh, discussed in the limit and continuity part of a of a video the first uh, the third video right okay so obviously this is a singularity of this function you should check it by yourself and now i will uh, expand this function in powers of z minus z z minus 0 right okay clearly z equal to 0 is an essential singularity of fz right and i am writing it y you should know the reason why i am writing this right okay then expanding this fz by series expansion of exponential function that will give me 1 minus 1 by z square plus whole square by 2 factorial and so on right and you can see that there are all of the terms are containing negative powers of z it indicates that it is an essential singularity right and uh, obviously there is uh, no term containing 1 by z because to find the residue you need a coefficient of 1 over z minus z not and here the term is completely missing it means that residue is zero therefore residue and this is written in the following way residue of uh, function fz at the point what point z equal to 0 is equal to coefficient of 1 by z in this series and that is obviously zero right so this notation i will be using this notation in order to write residue i will add that here v right residue f z at z equal to z not equal to my sorry a minus 1 right okay take another example example number 2 uh find the residue of fz equal to z plus 2 sin 1 over z plus 2 at z equal to minus 2 right and again you can see that if you plug z equal to minus 2 here you will get sin infinity and here you will have zero right so zero multiplied by sin infinity that is looking like an indeterminate form right okay so expanding again this function by lorentz expansion and you can see that uh, the series of the the series must have center at z equal to minus 2 it indicates that 
the series must be containing po positive as well as negative powers of z plus 2 only right so luckily this time i have z plus 2 here and i have z plus 2 here so i do not need any manipulation had there been z plus 3 or z plus 4 then i have to do manipulation z plus 2 plus 2 so on right okay so i will just expand this sign function right and applying the series of sign that is uh, 1 over z plus 2 minus 1 over z plus 2 whole cube over 3 factorial right and so on right and then multiplying this z plus 2 inside i will get 1 minus 1 over 3 factorial z plus 2 whole square and so on right and all the terms will be containing negative powers of z plus 2 obviously uh, next term will be z plus 2 to the power 4 i think right and uh, the coefficient of 1 over z plus 2 is again missing here right therefore residue of fz at z equal to minus 2 is equal to 0 right you can see that there is no term containing 1 over z plus 2 right so in these both of these examples we are getting residue is equal to 0 that is just a coincidence i will take another example which uh, will give a non zero residue example number 3 if i take the function find residue of fz at e to the power 1 over z at z equal to 0 right solution expanding this function fz equal to 1 plus 1 over z plus 1 over z square over 2 factorial dash is dash right and since you have this series in uh, powers of z minus 0 obviously and the coefficient of 1 over z is 1 this time we are having coefficient 1 by z right residue of fz at z equal to 0 is equal to a minus 1 that is coefficient of 1 by z and that is actually equal to 1 this time right so in all of these three examples i have used that basic principle to obtain a residue right by using Lorentz series expansion uh, and in each of these three examples uh, this indicated point z equal to minus 2 and z equal to 0 z equal to 0 all of these points were essential similarity of our function right okay and uh, what happens when uh, there is a removable similarity at z equal to 0 right i will take another example example number 4 if i take find residue of fz equal to sin z over z at z equal to 0 right and we have already discussed this question in our last video right uh, where we uh, saw that this is actually a removable similarity of this function if you plug 0 here 0 by 0 form right and then you apply lh rule you will get 1 right uh, so z equal to 0 is also uh, is uh, actually a removable similarity of this function right and what happens at removal similarity if something is some point is removal similarity of that function what happens at this point is there any scope to obtain negative powers of z i don't think so because you are saying that is a removal similarity right and if z equal to a is a removal similarity of some function then it can always be uh, converted into an analytic function by supplying a proper definition of f a right you can always supply f 0 equal to 1 by redefining this function at z equal to 0 right uh, in that case that this function will become analytic and if a function is analytic you cannot have negative powers of z right so eventually there will be no negative power of z and 1 by z uh, coefficient that is a minus 1 will be absent there and i think the z residue will be 0 right so let us see what happens here okay uh, fz equal to 1 over z and expanding this sign function 1 minus z sorry 1 minus z minus z minus z cube by 3 factorial plus z to the power 5 by 5 factorial and so on right so using the expansion for sine and then taking this 1 by z inside 1 minus z square by 2 3 factorial and then z to the power 4 by 5 factorial and so on right so as we discussed that this is actually a removal singularity so we can convert this function into an analytic function so there is no scope of getting negative power and you can 
see that that result is obviously verified right there, there are no negative powers of z so 1 by z coefficient is absent therefore a residue of such function uh, z equal to 0 should be equal to 0 right so if you see these four examples uh, this point was actually an essential similarity or removable similarity right but now we'll discuss the case what happens when z equal to z naught is a pole right uh, so we'll uh, focus on that part especially i will derive some new formula right however this formula is still there right you can always rely on this Laurent expansion but sometimes you need a shortcut formula to evaluate a residue especially when z equal to z naught is a pole right okay so i will rub this first residue at poles right since you know that uh, z equal to z naught is a pole of a function fz if you have some finite negative powers of z minus z naught in its Lorentz expansion right so i will start with the pole of order m uh, i will uh, say two cases right case one and case two case one if z equal to z naught is a pole of order m of function f z then the residue formula f z at z equal to z naught is given by 1 over n minus 1 factorial right and d n minus 1 dz n minus 1 right z minus z naught to the power n and here we'll have that function f z and this is evaluated at or should i write uh, z tends to z naught here or i will write it here z tends to z naught right or z equal to z naught right or you can write limit z tends to z naught here right okay so this is the formula when you have a pole at z naught of order m you will be using this formula however that Lorentz expansion is still there right okay so this formula says that if you have a pole at z naught of order m then you will use this formula this should be m minus 1 i think m right m minus 1 this should be m okay and this m minus 1 factorial okay and the case 2 and that is a special case of actually this thing if z equal to z naught is a simple pole that is pole of order 1 right you just substitute m equal to 1 here right you will get residue fz at z equal to z naught you plug m equal to 1 here you will get this term will be 1 and this is 0 for derivative you will be having limit z tends to z naught z minus z naught multiplied by f z right so we'll have two formulas one is for simple pole and another one is for pole of mth order right and uh, i will derive this, these formula first with the help of that Lorentz expansion right so case one proof for case one uh, since you know that z equal to z naught is a pole of order m it indicates that the maximum negative power of z minus z naught is m right if you uh, expand your function in powers of z minus z naught the maximum negative power of z minus z naught will be m because the pole has order m right so i am writing that fz okay write fz in this notation equal to uh, the fir uh, first the most negative power will be a minus m over z minus 
z naught to the power how much m right and then a minus 2 z minus z naught the square then a minus 1 z minus z naught this is the principal part right and you can see that the most negative power of z minus z naught is m right after this all the terms are zero right and now comes the uh, analytic part the first term will be a naught and then i think a1 z minus z naught and then positive powers of z minus z naught right right as z in terms of Lorentz expansion right that is valid for some reason right in 0 less than z minus z naught less than r right okay now what do i need uh, i am going to use that original definition of uh, residue i know that i am interested in finding this a minus 1 right so i want to obtain a minus 1 from this series so what i will do i think i will multiply by z minus z naught to the power m on both sides multiply both sides by z minus z naught to the power m right uh, multiplying by this function you will get z minus z naught to the power m f z equal to i think this will become a minus m right another term will be a minus 1 less m minus 1 and we'll have z minus z naught to the power 1 there right okay and uh, or should i write it as a minus m plus 1 a minus m plus 1 okay and then if you see this term and uh, this term will become a minus 2 z mi uh, z minus z naught to the power m minus 2 and this term will become a minus 1 z minus z naught to the power m minus 1 right m minus 1 and the rest of the terms will contain powers of z minus z naught like this okay positive powers of z minus z naught okay now uh, what i will do i will uh, i need this a minus 1 actually and if you see this term this term is containing a minus 1 that is the term of our interest but it is containing this factor z minus z naught to the power m minus 1 so what do we want you want to get rid of this z minus z naught to the power m minus 1 right and in order to get the rid of this z minus z naught to the power m minus 1 i will differentiate this equation m minus 1 times right uh, then it will become a constant differentiating a function or differentiating a polynomial of order m right m times will give you constant m vectorial right so this is the factor or this is the polynomial of a power degree m minus 1 so you have to differentiate it m minus 1 times such that uh, you will have this a minus 1 here only uh, this uh, polynomial will be uh, rejected after differentiating m minus 1 times so i will differentiate differentiate m minus 1 times both sides right so if we differentiate this uh, function m minus 1 times we will get d m minus 1 dz m minus 1 right of z minus z naught to the power m f z right okay equal to equal to differentiating it m minus 1 times will produce 0 because this is constant and this will also become 0 all of these terms up to a minus 2 will become 0 because a minus 2 term however it is not written here that will be z minus z naught to the power m minus 2 right and you are differentiating m minus 1 times then that up to that terms all terms will vanish on differentiation right so start with this term differentiation of this term with, res with respect to z m minus 1 times will give you a minus 1 right now i think m minus 1 factorial right a differentiation of a polynomial of degree n suppose we have x to the power n and if you differentiate it n times you will obtain n factorial right 
so the same thing I have used here and another term is actually a minus 2 z minus z naught to the power uh, m minus 2 no this is z minus m minus 1 and I think other another term will become a naught and that will become m minus 1 factorial z minus z naught and another term will be will be a 1 and I think that will contain integration of this thing actually m minus 1 factorial z minus z naught whole square over 2 factorial right like this plus one. right you just integrate this term you will get this thing right okay now approach z tends to z naught or you just put z equal to z naught on both sides right uh, you will get limit z tends to z naught dm minus 1 over dz m minus 1 z minus z naught to the power m f z and you can see that all of these terms will go to 0 you will be left with this term only right a minus 1 and here we are having m minus 1 factorial right and that m minus 1 factorial can be taken here in the next step right so that will give you a minus 1 equal to 1 over m minus 1 factorial limit z tends to z naught dm minus 1 dz m minus 1 of z minus z naught to the power m f z right so this is the formula for residue right and uh, for case 2 you just put m equal to 1 here right case 2 and you know that this a minus 1 is actually residue right this is the same thing you want it case 2 put m equal to 1 here in this formula right so you will get a minus 1 equal to limit z tends to z naught and it will become z minus z naught f z right these are small proofs for these formulae which are very useful if you don't want to uh, use that Lorentz expansion right so I will be using uh, two or three examples based on these formulae this is for mth order pole and this is, uh, this is for simple pole right example number one mm, find the residues of function fz equal to 1 over z square and then minus 1 at poles z equal to 0 and z equal to 1 right and I have written here that these, these are poles however you may uh, wish to investigate the nature of this singularity 0 is whether 0 is a pole is it a removable singularity is it uh, an essential singularity right uh, you can check it obviously z equal to 0 is a pole if you put denominator equal to 0 right that will give you 0 0 twice and since the numerator is non vanishing at that point it indicates that that is a pole right okay so I have written directly that these are poles right solution uh, if you put this denominator equal to 0 you will get 0 equal 0 0 twice means the multiplicity of 0 will be twice that is called multiplicity the number of times you are obtaining 0 from this denominator that will be 2 and that is called multiplicity right however multiplicity and uh, order of pole are two different things but in case when you have a function of this form uh, rational function means the numerator is also a polynomial and the denominator is also a polynomial in that case uh, multiplicity of a pole is actually the order of a pole right but this is not true in general if you have if you don't have that rational function uh, if you have some quotient function like sin z over cos z or any example then you cannot say that the multiplicity of a pole is actually equal to the order of the pole right so be careful at that point 
and since it is a rational function clearly z equal to 0 is a pole of order 2 and you should know the reason why I am writing this right because actually it is given giving z equal to 0 0 twice means multiplicity is 2 and since it is a rational function so we can say that uh, the pole is of order 2 right so multiplicity becomes the order if you have some rational function like this okay z equal to 0 is a pole of order 2 and z equal to 1 is a simple pole right and z equal to 1 is a simple pole or pole of order 1 because you are obtaining 1 once the multiplicity is 1 right so first i will uh, find the residue of a function fz at the simple pole first z equal to 1 this pole and I will use this formula simple pole formula this one right and that is actually limit z tends to 1 according to that formula z minus 1 multiplied by my function fz right and you will see that limit z tends to 1 if you multiply z minus 1 with a function you will get 1 over z square and plugging 1 you will get 1 so the residue is actually 1 right and residue at z equal to 0 and uh, remember that z equal to 0 is a pole of order 2 so i have to use that formula the general formula of mth order pole this one right so limit sorry residue fz z equal to 1 uh, 1 over uh, 1 over 2 minus 1 factorial right and uh, limit z tends to 1 uh, 2 minus 1 means first derivative right the derivative is of order 1 less right first derivative of what z square I have to multiply by z minus z naught to the power m that is z minus 0 to the power m and m is actually 2 here so that's why z square multiplied by f z right okay now it will become 1 factorial okay and limit z tends to 1 and d by dz of 1 over z minus 1 right so the idea is actually to get rid of that function or a polynomial which is giving a pole actually z equal to sorry z equal to 0 z equal to 0 is the pole given by this function right so when we apply this formula actually what happens you get rid of that function which is giving the pole I get rid of this z square I am left with only z minus 1 and that is the same thing that happened here right I got rid of z minus 1 at this step right because z minus 1 is the giving the pole z equal to 1 right okay so with d by dz of z minus 1 and you differentiate this you will get minus 1 over z minus 1 whole square and then you plug z equal to 0 and you get minus 1 right so you can see that in both of these cases i have used this formula not the lorentz expansion however one may wish to use the lorentz expansion again but be careful at that point if you want to find the residue at this point z equal to 0 right uh, you have to expand this function in powers of z and for that you have to first apply partial fractions right and then choose a suitable domain also because choosing a suitable domain is also important right and the domain should be enclosing just one singularity right as we have seen in our last video that a Lorentz series is sometimes misleading it gives wrong information if you choose the wrong domain right so be careful when you use that Lorentz series expansion and to find residue at z equal to 1 you should expand this function in powers of z minus 1 and for that you have to do some manipulation at this point z square minus 1 plus 1 and then the coefficient of 1 over z minus 1 will be giving the same answer as we obtained here right so i will suggest you that don't use that Lorentz series expansion every time when you have pole right in case of essential similarity or removal similarity you should rely on uh, Lorentz expansion but in case of poles just use these simple formulas right okay now I will take uh, another example but before taking that example what happens when this fz is not of this nice form means rational form right you have functions like sin z over cos z or sec z 
or exponential functions what happens when we have exponential functions in denominator right because if you see this process right you clearly identify that what happens at this point if i multiply z minus 1 with the fz this z minus factor one factor will completely cancels you see you can see that z minus 1 is completely cancelled right and at this point the z square is completely cancelled with this fz right but what happens when your function is not in this nice form like you have e to the power z minus 1 here right in that case you cannot cancel any factor right because you should be having a factor form here factored form and factored form is pos possible when you have your denominator in terms of a polynomial right in that case you can write it in factorized form but if, if you have some transcendental function at the denominator you cannot factorize it and then you cannot cancel it right so we need some another formula first i will derive that formula for a function quotient function i should write quotient function quotient function fz equal to pz over qz right so if fz has a simple pole at z equal to z not right and pz is analytic and non zero at z equal to z not then we can use an alternate formula but very useful formula uh, residue of fz at z equal to z not can be obtained by this uh, method uh, p z not over q dash z not and this formula is very very important and useful while evaluating the residues when you don't have that your function in that form polynomial form denominator right so the simple thing is that you have a simple pole at z equal to z not right and your numerator function is analytic at that point and there is non zero at that point then you can use this formula you just plug that pole in your numerator and the differentiation this q dash differentiation of denominator first i will uh, write a small proof for the formula right since fz has a simple pole at z equal to z not it implies that it implies that qz has a simple zero at z equal to z not this fact we have been using this fact many times right okay now since G, qz as a simple zero at z equal to z not so writing your qz as z minus z not to the power one because it is a simple zero right multiplied by some function let the function be hz right where hz is analytic and h z naught is not equal to zero right okay then what i will do i will uh, differentiate this equation both sides on differentiation right both sides i will get q dash z and you have to use product rule here z minus z naught h dash z plus h z and then you plug z equal to z naught on both sides right and then you will get q dash z naught equal to h z naught right fine so i will be using this value right now what do i want I want that residue is this and to reach this I will use my previous formula I think this formula for simple pole I will I'm going to use this residue formula for simple pole and I will reach this result using this I will reach this result right okay 
now residue at z equal to z naught is given by using that formula fz comma z equal to z naught and the formula is uh, limit z tends to z naught z minus z naught into f z right okay now plug the value of fz fz is well that fz fz is uh, pz over fz right equal to limit z tends to z naught z minus z naught pz over q z right okay now if you plug z equal to z naught here you will get zero in the numerator and obviously zero in the denominator why zero in the denominator because you know that z zero is a zero of qz let's see this statement qz as a simple zero at z equal to z naught so we'll get a zero by zero form right and if you get a zero by zero form you should apply lh rule right so apply lh rule limit z tends to z naught you should differentiate the numerator z minus z naught p dash z plus p z and differentiate the denominator also q dash z and now you plug your z equal to z naught you will get p z naught over q dash z naught i think uh, q dash z naught okay q z should be written like this one z minus z naught and that will be cancelled then p z over h z and then this will become that is also fine i think mm, okay i want to use that so i should write it as z minus z naught p z and q z should be written as this way z minus z naught and h z right okay and then this will be cancelled right and you will be left with limit z tends to z naught p z over h z and see here and you then you plug z naught here you will get p z naught over h z naught right and then h z naught is actually equal to q dash z naught so this is the formula for residue at z equal to z naught if z naught is a simple pole of some quotient function like this right so this formula is very simple you just plug your z naught in the numerator and differentiate the denominator and plug that value right i will exhibit a small example here example number one find residue at z equal to pi by 2 right of f z equal to 10 z right so solution you can see that your function is actually a quotient function the numerator is sin z and the denominator is cos z and you can easily see that if you plug z equal to pi by 2 in the denominator it will go to 0 right and sin 90 is 1 right so the basic conditions to use this formula must be satisfied if you want to use this formula just be careful that the denominator okay denominator has a pole sorry function has a pole at this point that's very clear but the numerator that should be analytic at this point sin z is analytic everywhere actually and it is non-zero at that point that's why I, I will be using this formula right okay so since it is already given that this is a pole since z equal to pi by 2 is a pole and simple pole pole of order 1 right uh, you can check that it's a pole of order 1 right and in order to check that you should check the zero of the denominator right if you differentiate the denominator again you will get sine z and sine 90 is actually equal to 1 it indicates that the first derivative of cos z is non-vanishing at z equal to pi by 2 right which thereby by implies that uh, the denominator has a simple zero at z equal to pi by 2 and which automatically implies that this function is a simple pole at z equal to pi by 2 right so all of those workings should be done and then using this beautiful formula 
therefore residue of fz z equal to pi by 2 will be actually equal to uh, using the formula directly sine pi by 2 right and differentiation of the denominator that is minus sine z and then plugging pi by 2 you will get minus 1 as the residue right you can see, see see that this formula is very useful while evaluating the residue right otherwise the process is very complicated if you want to use that previous formula right example number two find the residues of um, fz equal to 1 over z sin z at all poles right you have to find all of its poles and find residues there right solution uh, in order to find the pole you will equate this denominator to 0 and then you will get put z sin z equal to 0 and you will get z equal to 0 from here and z equal to uh, from here n pi and n will be an integer right it is just similar to obtaining the zeros of the denominator right and then we can comment about the poles of fz right you can see that zero is also obtained from this point if you plug the n equal to zero n equal to zero belongs to the, this set z equal to zero is also obtained from here so z equal to zero is obtained twice means multiplicity of zero is twice and actually uh, this function has a pole at z equal to zero of order two right and to see that you have to differentiate this in a mind that will be z cos z plus sin z yes the denominator is going to zero and the next derivative will be non-zero means the first second derivative of this denominator is non-zero i will write that clearly you should verify it by yourself right uh, the denominator that is z sin z has a zero of order two at z equal to zero right and a simple zero at the rest of the points and those points are z equal to n pi where n is a non-zero integer right okay so i will treat those cases separately the case at z equal to zero where it is, has a simple sorry zero of order two and simple zero at z equal to n pi right so we are interested in finding the poles so first is residue at simple pole z equal to n pi where n is actually an integer but not zero right is given by residue fz comma z equal to n pi be careful at this point we have n pi a simple pole so i will be using a pole uh, formula for this simple pole and that formula is actually uh, yeah this is my pz is one and this is my qz pz qz right okay so pz is one that is fine and this is your qz so differentiate it once according to the, to the formula you should differentiate it you will get z cos z plus sine z and then you plug this z equal to n pi if you plug z equal to n pi this will go to zero you will get one over cos n pi and n is non-zero so cos pi is minus one cos 2 pi is plus one so i think that will be minus one to the power n it will depend on n actually cos of odd pi is negative and cos of even pi is positive so i will write minus one to the power n here right minus one to the power n and since you are plugging z equal to n pi so this is your residue right and now comes the other pole at z equal to zero residue at z equal to zero and since zero is a pole of order two so we cannot use this formula that formula that formula is valid for first order pole only right now i have to rely on something else maybe on the basic or original thing th thing that is Lorentz expansion and that expansion should be in powers of z only right so i'm going to expand this in powers of z right in order to find the residue okay 
and expanding it in powers of z i should write 1 over z sin z and writing its expansion um, z minus z cube by 3 factorial plus z to the power 5 by 5 factorial minus dash dash, dash. and then taking z, z common i will get 1 over z square and 1 minus z square over 3 factorial z to the power 4 by 5 factorial minus dash dash, dash. then i will take this whole thing in the numerator right and 1 minus z square by 3 factorial minus z to the power 4 upon 5 factorial i should ignore the rest of the terms because that will not affect my answer actually all of the terms will be containing powers of z to the power 6 z to the power 8 and so on actually those will not affect the answer i need the coefficient of 1 over z only and 1 over z uh, can be obtained from this term only right so i will rejecting the higher order terms and now expanding this you will get 1 over z square 1 i think plus z square over 3 factorial minus z to the power 4 over 5 factorial and then again plus z square over 3 factorial minus z to the power 4 by 5 factorial whole square and so on right so you can see that you will not get coefficient of 1 by z actually if you expand all of these terms you cannot get coefficient of 1 by z right so i think constant term will be there that is 1 over 3 factorial and then uh, z square term will be there uh, 1 by z square term 1 over z square is the only term okay then um, this will give minus z square over 5 factorial and then all positive powers of z so the only negative power is this one right and this is of no importance no use this is not 1 over z this is 1 over z square so residue will be actually equal to 0 right equal to a minus 1 that is 0 right so in this example you can see that sometimes we can use that simple formula simple for simple pole and uh, if you are not able to do that you have to rely on the basic principle and that is the Lorentz series expansion right the original one i think the last example example number three uh, let me take uh, find residue of i have taken example of 10 z here okay i will take sec z of f z equal to or e to the power z over e to the power z minus one this is good right at z equal to 0 right i have given the pole you can see that if you plug z equal to 0 in the denominator you are getting 0 here right but the numerator is non zero right so verify by yourself z equal to 0 is a simple pole why why it is a simple pole you can see that actually if you pick up the denominator this one and this denominator has a simple zero at this point right and for that you have to differentiate it one times and you will see that its first derivative the denominator's first derivative is non vanishing at that point so you will say that the denominator function has simple zero at this point so ultimately the full function has a simple pole at this point right so all of those workings are left for you and i will use that beautiful formula residue of fz at z equal to 0 will be given by using the formula this is my numerator part right e to the power z and the differentiation of denominator that is e to, i will write that d by dz okay minus 1 and then i will plug my pole here i will get e to the power z answer will be 1 right and similarly you can investigate the other poles of this function the other poles are at 2 and pi eta we have done this example in our previous video and all of those poles are simple poles and the similar similarly you can also find residues at those poles right so this is it for this video right in this video you have seen the importance of that spatial coefficient appearing in the negative part of uh, lorentz series right and that coefficient a minus 1 is called residue in the next video we will be seeing the application of this re residue where it is used it is actually used in evaluating contour integrals right and that will be the part of our next video, right? Thanks for this video.